Greetings. This is Lin Chen Chan Chata. Welcome. Hello, Max. How are you? All right. Um, I just wanted a general introduction to uh, I cannot pronounce Jean Dan Council. Jean Dai. It's Jean the Dai Council. Jean Dai or the Jean Dai Council. Yes. Right. Um, I am the twenty-sixth member, which is a, a a royal member, but they are the the energies that help the universe, actually. They're well known throughout many, many galaxies. Uh-huh. They have much energies and they have much um, decide, decision power and decision making to do. There are many that come to them for help, other planets, other uh, species, if you will. And they all, they are being helped by the Jondai Council. Now, okay. Yes. How many humans does it contain? No humans. Uh, I mean, human looking, uh, mammal, human, uh, humanoid people. Most of the Jondai Council is made up of Pleiadian, uh, Pleiadians. But oh, uh -huh. there are some Arcturians there. There are some uh, other species as well. Uh, there are Kior in it, or mm -hmm. Kior, at least, associates. Uh, there, are, there are some Nordic, the Nordic Pleiadians, of course. There are some Fendorian uh, council members. Mm -hmm. But mostly they're Pleiadians. Okay, because so that's what where it originated? The original uh, John Dyke Council was uh, Pleiadians that uh, worked with some Octorians and some beings beyond this galaxy to create an energy and to and a um, discipline of growing energy within the system that can be used for a creative work and for manipulations and for different kinds of positive activities. So what percent of the John Day Council are galactic humans? Uh, let's see. I would see a very small percentage. One twenty-sixth. I mean, uh, if you take Pleiadians as uh, galactic humans, or how do you call them? Uh, humans of Lyran descent. The uh, oh. mam mammalian human-looking people. Well, there are only two of those on the council. But are aren't Pleiadians the humans? Pleiadians, but they're in a different category than what you're talking about. Uh, aren't they human-looking? Somewhat. So how do you call them? I, I would call them galactic humans, or I think it is a word which is used. How do well, you call... One is a Kior, which is a human-looking kind of person, and the other uh -huh. one is a, a Yu-Yel hybrid, right. which is a human Yu-Yel hybrid, yes. Okay. So everyone else is not human-looking? Well, everyone else is not human, correct. They, ah. We, as Pleiadians, have somewhat of a human look. We do not, we're not as ugly as some of the other species. We're blue, but we are actually, we can be passable for good looking to some humans. Uh, I mean, are you mammals? Are we what? Mammals. Yes, we are. So how, what percentage of mammals is on the Pleiadian Council? Oh, about 70%. Okay, that's good enough. I mean, we, sh we should somehow relate, uh, you know, which are completely strange species and which are more related to us. Of so course. I guess being mammal is, a, is, a, is a making, a, making the species a little closer and more understandable. Yes. Um, so uh, what powers does the council have? Um, they have... In terms of Earth, Earth, history, Earth politics and Earth decisions about the Earth. What powers does it have? We have sent many of our people there to work on the ascension from the ground, point zero or ground zero, if you will, at that, if, as you would call it, 
So we have several representatives there to help hold the energy, and there will be some that will become speakers and leaders uh, at the appropriate times. Uh, how many people are educated off planet of those? Um, mostly all of them, but all of them have some off-world education, but they don't know it. They, oh. It's been downloaded to them in, in that form. So they're getting educations as downloads, and they're understanding that these downloads are part of what they need to know to move forward with their missions. Uh-huh. Uh, so is there anybody like uh, fully conscious uh, of planet being which is working down here? Oh, absolutely. There's about seven of the our Mayan people that are aware of their identities. And they are aware that they are human born, that the, the Pleiadian consciousness is there with them. Uh-huh. Uh, all right. I, I'm looking for the ones which never forgot, which were like fully uh, off planet born and just came as as a already a fully conscious being and never forgot. Uh, are there like people like that? Well, no. Usually they are born into the humanity and then made aware of who they okay. are as time moves forward. Got it. Got it. Got it. So this would be like uh, many you mean less than a hundred, right? Oh, of course. There's okay. three royal families, and there, there are uh, representatives from all three royal Mayan families on your planet at this time. My brother is there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, so what, um, uh, what are your uh, interactions with the um, Galactic Federation of Light and uh, Gurk Fitnir? What's your relationship are, of the, of of the council lies with them uh, they have a little different understanding of how things should work than we do we are mm -hmm. in charge from ancient times of some of the things that will happen but they will they will actually we will actually um help them move forward as well we interact occasionally and speak about what is necessary to be done, and um, we are regarded as the foremost authority on what should happen. So therefore, many of them will listen to what we have to say and will help to move in that direction. However, their means of moving uh, to the positive direction is different than our means. So they, that is why there is separations. Yeah, what's your abilities? What's your means? What is our means? Yes. We are, have people on the planet. Those okay. other species and other, other uh, federations do not. Okay. That is one and way that we have a greater understanding of the human condition. Okay. And... Um uh, would you like send ships or what's your way of doing things? We send downloads of information so that okay. they know what to do next and how to proceed. We okay, wait uh, times and we know from the book, we have a book here that gives uh -huh. the future, tells the future of your planet in some uh -huh. way, but it does not give the exact path to the future, but it okay. gives the uh, an, an resemblance of what the future will look like if we do our work properly. Thank you. What's um, uh, how many uh, how many individuals on uh, off planet are working on the project? Is it like oh, hundreds, many. thousands, millions, billions? There are at least hundreds from our our area of the 
of the galaxy and our area of our galaxies, um, there are hundreds. And there are many other hundreds of other species also working in the same uh, line as we are. Uh huh. And what are they doing? And they are helping humanity stay alive. All right. What's the structure of the of the of the work on your side? Is it uh, voluntary and everybody doing oh, their no. own thing, or is well, it coordinated? It's voluntary, yes, but it is also they also realize that beyond it being voluntary, it's most needed. And so being voluntary is one thing, but being um, dedicated to the cause is even a greater part of it. They may be volunteers, but they are greatly dedicated to bringing about the most positive outcome. All right. So what do you think about outbreeding of humans? Uh, so that is one of the questions that will come eventually. Uh, how much do we want to crossbreed and outbreed with uh, outside civilizations and allow them to make families and live on, pla on the planet? So do you oh, think it is a concern at all? No, it's not a concern at all. You're already very hybrid in your mm -hmm. makeup. So you are able to uh, mate with many different species at this time. However, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're not really concerned about that at the moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we sh uh, when, when, it, when, when the time comes to allow uh, uh, settlers, basically, allow settlers there to get our citizenship, uh, how many individual should we allow our citizenship when, 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 we, when we are in charge of that. Right now, it's, out, it's basically not allowed at all. We cannot, uh, the, the, the visitors cannot stay here. They maybe well, only can visit only secretly. But when they allowed, uh, what, what would you recommend? I would say it depends on the condition of the earth at that particular time. Uh -huh. I would imagine that there will be representatives from several different species that will want to uh, work with the governments directly and be um, a positive influence once you are willing to accept that kind of uh, commentary and recommendations. But still, it is your world and your government. You will get to decide what things to agree with and what things not to. However, uh -huh. there will, I do not know how many uh, different species will be coming to your planet, but uh -huh. I know that there are many that would like to be friends and part of your neighborhood, yes. So how do there you... may be several different representatives, and uh -huh. that is not a bad thing. I think that that is actually uh, good, that there will be a lot of uh, divergence in their thought process. But, um... Once we allow the visitors, um, suppose there would be like millions we want to, wanting to settle here. Uh, how would we regulate sure it? Do, do have... want... I don't think you're, you're going to have millions wanting to settle on your planet. Your planet is really not considered one of the more uh, uh, benevolent worlds. So you, you are not considered a good a place to live, but visitation would be quite a lot, yes. But wanting to live there, I don't think that there will be uh, millions wanting to live there, no. Uh-huh. So there will be tourists in, in, uh, in yes, uh, tourists. protective suits, protective suits, and, uh, but, you know, if they uh, want to mate with our... Uh, population uh, and leave the children here, should uh, we allow that? That will be in the rules and regulations that will be pounded out after the first contact. Now, I do not think that there will be just uh, fragrant disregard for interspecies uh, conception. I believe there will have to be some kind of rules and regulations for how people uh, and species act 
within the realms of your planet and uh, how humans will act in the realms of other planets. So there will be rules and regulations, and I don't think that, uh, that it will be a big problem. There are those that want to mate with humans, and there are humans that want to mate with uh, people from outside their world. However, I don't see that people will find other species as attractive as they find their own, et cetera, et cetera. But there might be reason, uh, and there could be love involved in wanting to mate with someone from your world. But I don't find your people that attractive. I would rather mm -hmm. mate with my own people. But there will be those that will want to do mm -hmm. so. So there will have to be some rules and regulations on how to conduct oneself in these kinds of relationships. You cannot just have um, in, uh, what is it? Just relationships that are not meaningful. Uh-huh. So um, how about uh, hybridization pilots? Um, so far, we already have been subject to secret hybridization programs. Some of them are benevolent and some of them were not as much. And suppose we have hybridization parties which just kind of send a lot of their DNA towards our planet once uh, the aliens are allowed as tourists. You know, and never know what, uh, what they could uh, inject into us. And we don't have a technology to control that. So that would be one of the concerns. Yes. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, do we have a technology to control that? We do. Uh huh. So we would have to need some help into uh, tracing that. The and thing somehow, is, mm -hmm. um, those kinds of matters will be taken care of diplomatically rather than technologically. I mean, if you open uh, the door to, to tourists, then. Um, you know, they would have technological ways of doing things, right? Um, yes, and that would be dealt with by the laws that are made and the, the rules and regulations between the worlds that have to be made before such activity is accepted. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So that's what I said. There will, it will take a little while to make rules and regulations on how people are allowed to interact. They will not be able to bring weapons and things of that nature to your planet or vice uh -huh. versa. And things of this nature will be discussed and hammered out before there are people moving back and forth. So is it already a, a standard, like in, in our U European Union, there is already lots of standardized procedures and they add new countries and uh, expand their standards to the new countries. Is it like a standard in the galaxy for the new planets which, were, uh, which are allowed into the galactic society? You have to go by their customs, beliefs, protocols. There's much to consider before you just uh, do that. So I'm, 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 I'm hoping that you already know what you're doing, that you already have experience incorporating other planets into galactic society. We, we do. There are many protocols. There are many things that must uh, fit for us to uh -huh. exchange, do some uh, exchange and trading and all kinds of things. We do uh -huh. have other species on our planet, and we, it all works very well because it's within the law of this planet. This planet makes the laws for those that are coming in. So in that case, we follow the laws for those planets when we are going out to visit them. They must follow the laws for when they come to visit our world. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There, no there was a, t a time called uh, diplomatic immunity, but that does not exist anymore because it does not work. Yeah, I, I just imagine some kind of a workforce which already is qualified into in, um, in, um, mm, incorporating the new worlds into the galaxy because I'm assuming there is like 
uh, every day hundreds of worlds is, is entering the galaxy. So yes, so there should be some process and and some there experience is. with that. And there is laws on entering our galaxy from the galactic councils and galactic uh -huh. laws. So and they know these before they enter, or they will know them as soon as they do because they are being sent out constantly to um, even beyond the galaxy. Uh-huh. I believe so your time is up there, my friend. Yes, yes, you're right, yes. Thank you for reminding. And nice to talk to you. It is a pleasure to talk to you. I will be back at some other time. I do much communication with Jim, so I will be uh, talking to you later on. And I invite you to, con uh, to connect directly to me and, uh, and uh, telepathically uh, come into communication with me as well. Yes. And you know of David, my brother. Yes. We work together very, very uh, closely at times. Uh-huh. I will talk to you again sometime. Talk to you again sometime. Thank you. Love to you. And many blessings from Maya. A love to you and many blessings from, uh, from the earth. Thank you. This is well appreciated.